everybody welcome back to another tutorial lesson in this one we're going to be going over a new feature of 3.5 okay so 3.5 what's new tons and tons of things and at this point you know just covering i think a couple of pieces at a time is a little bit more effective than throwing 15 to 20 new function at you and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at path guiding again and now we have instead of just path guiding we have a light tree so right down here you have light tree it's defaulted on for 3.5 so if you just leave 3.5 alone and you go to cpu rendering turn on path guiding set your training samples obviously something lower than your max samples you know so that way you can get your training samples out of the way and hey you can put that between 128 and 256 per uh, the blender manual so that's that's good and then you can set your regular samples as high as you want whatever you think your PC and whatever your patients will allow you to do so what is path guiding well path guiding is a replacement for ray tracing and what it's going to do is going to reduce the noise in your scene overall and find those those harder to find and the rate where the ray tracing was not able to like capture light so i've got two renders that i did and i'll show you those immediately so we can get a good idea of what's going on in the first example here we've got good old-fashioned cycles by itself with nothing else going on i've got a skylight in my scene and i've got a loft window bringing in the natural environment light and then I've got some extra lights in the scene here and there's a nice little ambient glow coming from behind this door. Now if we switch over to what I did which is the final for the path guiding and the light tree I'm pretty impressed with this this is a much uh, much bigger difference very noticeable you can see and of course path guiding is meant to bring that light off of those diffuse surfaces a lot better it's designed to calculate distances better and kind of it per the manual plays a russian roulette with the actual light paths in the scene which ray tracing wouldn't do it wouldn't take say hey this one's not contributing to the scene as much to cut it out so it's going to take that light from the window and you can see the cut here on the wood and the proper reflections and now overall the entire scene is lit so much better if i kind of like come back over here for a second you can see that's that's just not good the light that should be coming through from the environment lighting it's it's dying right here in this little square it's basically dying in that square that's not really going too far and then if we come back over here you can see it's a major difference now light tree what is light tree going to do and i've got a tutorial on the path guiding that goes into way more depth well light tree is going to more effectively sample the lights in your scene so like these lights i've got here individually plus this nice little glow behind the sliding door which who knows where that goes into the kitchen probably and and what it's going to do is it's going to take in account for the distance and the estimated intensity and it's going to overall reduce noise in the scene and that's obviously a big difference and you can see so if i go to zoom in here uh, this looks a heck of a lot better the light is hitting the surfaces in a way that is going to and of course you have to increase your samples to match but it's going to give you a better final render and then you know you can throw this thing into the compositor when you're done but overall going from something like this that doesn't bring out the richness of the textures and these lights these yellow lamps here in the hallway i know the light that they're putting down is not the same color but the lights here in the hallway compared to here the glow coming off of them it really should be out in the hallway and on the other surfaces you know kind of carrying that through the scene so real quick just going to finish this up you know you put your training samples between 128 256 respectively put your maximum samples for your render higher than that 100 500 a thousand whatever you want whatever you can do with your pc path guiding center cpu only currently 
make sure that in the edit and preferences you've got your CPU selected as well. Uh, then for the surfaces, you could turn off volumes if you don't have any volumetrics in the scene. And then for the light tree, you can turn on the light tree and it has a default setting. So, and that's going to be on also by default. And one last thing, I'll put a link in the description and on your way down to that link, hit that subscribe and hit that like button it really helps out the channel. So I can keep bringing you guys some good content. Now, if I come over here, I'll put this as a link so you guys can look it over. You know, I've done a few tests with it to see how it works. It'll tell you all the specs and go into some good detail. And then you can progressively follow it down. I've actually got a tutorial on all this stuff. And I will, um, I will actually link that as well so you guys can go over it. So it would be easy to find. You don't have to go searching through everything. But anyways, the Blender manual is good. But, you know, going in and actually seeing how the render looks opposed to basic cycles, it's so much better. So if you're not using... 3.4 at least with the path guiding you're missing out and now remember this is not going to really help you the light tree is not going to help you with light tricks so if you're using rays and complex shader nodes and things and you're doing light tricks it's not going to work uh, but the path guiding absolutely will thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next tutorial lesson